doing nice like that powerful let's do that again how you doing look at that that's awesome I love that I don't know why I don't know why what is up up there what's going on got some youth in the house yes or some others awesome great um let me ask you a quick question uh, really quick um uh how many of you uh have trouble like praying out loud any pressure with that yeah okay one one few people okay uh have you ever had a moment where you also a different moment where you uh just didn't know what to pray just just did not have any idea what to pray like you were in a moment you're like i need to pray for something you're like i don't even know how to pray for this anybody had that moment like what, what do i what do i what do i do what do i pray how about how, how about you combine those two moments right you don't know what to pray and you just got asked to pray out loud how what do you do there what do you do there? Because there you can't even pray about it, right? You're like, you're stuck. You're like, oh God, I hope you're praying for your prayer. Like you're, you're like, it's a double thing. Does it negative, it's a double negative? I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, I had that moment several years ago. Uh, and I got, I got reminded of it uh, this week. I don't know why, but I think I've told that story before. But, but I had a moment where uh, I, got a, I, had a, I was asked uh, by someone to uh, like pray over um, a nightclub, a nightclub in Charlotte. And uh, it was like, called Label at the time, and now it's called something else, I'm sure. But it was popular a couple of years ago. Anyways, I, got, I met the guy through... Uh, someone I knew, and uh, anyways, I hit it off with him, and so he, he said, hey, would you come, and would you pray over, would you bless the nightclub? <laughs> like, I'm like, what? Like, how do you do that? Is that even allowed? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I going to get busted for this? Will they take my uh, clergy license away? I don't even know. I don't even know if I have one. I do have one. I do have one. Um, or the parking space. I don't have that. But, I mean, what would they do? Like, is it even, is there any scripture in there that says, Jesus bless this debauchery? Like, is there, is there, like, how, how do you even pray like that, right? And so, I had this moment. So, I was like, I, uh, 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 so I started talking to him. I actually visited, I went and hung out with him like on an afternoon, uh, not at night. Um, I didn't want to get, you know, I didn't want to get in the middle of Friday night, take the mic. Yo guys, I'm about to bless this. No, I didn't want to do that. So this, I went in the afternoon and the whole time I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here and why, I, I, I don't even know if this is going to take, you know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> Like, I mean, I don't know, there's not enough holy water. There's not enough oil in all of the anointing. I mean, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Anyway, so I went there, and I started having a conversation with him, and I asked him, I was like, why do you want to do this? And, and so it actually led to a great conversation. We got to pray together, spent two hours together, just talking about his life and his journey with God, and it was really great. And at the end, I was like, hey, listen, man, I'll, I'll pray, but uh, let me, I don't know if, I don't know if this is an official blessing. I don't know what you were expecting, but let me just pray this. And said, I prayed this. I prayed, uh, God, I just prayed that the people who come here um, would come to celebrate life, not to escape it. Um, and, and as I said this, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, right? right? Some of you guys are like, that's pretty good. I know. I didn't say that out loud, but I thought it. And uh, but then I thought, that is such a great idea, like, like a, a question to ask ourselves. Like, do we live our lives? Do we uh, look forward to the weekend? Do we look forward to the vacation, the, the extra time off, the whatever, the high, the party? Do we look forward to it to escape it? Or are we, are, we, are we trying to celebrate life? So the reason why we have fun and party and get together with people, do we, do we want to just escape our existence or do we actually want to celebrate the life that God's given us? Two different things. That's why it's, it seems interesting because when we, you, there, there are certain things you can do uh, to celebrate and it looks like you're trying to escape. And what, what's happened is, is that we, we take all the things that are just fun and uh, even Jesus turning water into wine. I mean, he did it because they were celebrating a wedding. They weren't escaping reality. They were trying to celebrate a wedding and he provides the alcohol for it. I mean, you can't get around to it. God is about celebrating things. Every time that Jesus talked about a story about finding something that was lost, they ended with a what? Party. Yeah, they ended with a celebration. So there's something to that, this idea of celebrating life. It's the key to life. And But so many of us, our reality is we want to escape the life that we're living right now. So this morning, what I want to do 
is I want to talk a little bit about that because as we conclude our series of the letters of John, it's five chapters and then there he also writes like one chapter each of First John, and, I'm sorry, Second John and Third John, in which he basically is saying the same things. He's, he's actually, uh, in one letter he's talking to um, uh, one of the elders, uh, the lady there who's, who started a church, who's, who is uh, maintaining that community and just uh, reassuring her about all the things that he's actually talking about in, all, in the first letter. And so it's, it's a theme that he has gone through. It's this idea that God is light, God is love, and then God is uh, life itself. And so God is love is what we talked about last week. But this morning, it's really about this idea. What is, what is this idea called God is life? So when it comes to the kind of life we're living, the kind of uh, things we are doing, is it, is it trying to escape or is it trying to celebrate? I think the question is, wh- wh- what, do you, what do you hear when you hear God is life? For some of us, do you hear God is life or do you hear life is God? Life is God. So what I, what I mean by that is, is there's a difference. I think for some of us, it's, it's fundamentally different because I think we, we live our lives in, in compartments. This is God's stuff and this is not God's stuff. This is something, this is the, my work, this is, my, this is where I work out, uh, this is where I go to church. I don't act the way I do at, at the gym like I do at church. Or to be clear, I don't act like in the church like I do at the gym because you know me I go crazy you know like or I don't act like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I remember one guy saying I'm kind of ruthless at my career and my work but I'm different with church people uh, I was like okay I kind of get that idea but it's this a living a life with compartments I, I, I'm this person here I'm this person here I'm this person here um, I'm, do, I'm different kinds of people and so you live the life escaping from one and getting into the next and not just celebrating and living in the life that you live. See, this notion of this, this notion of not this space, but that space, this idea of like, this space is not that good, that space is better, is, is not just common in our culture, but it's also common in spirituality, and especially in Christianity. Now, so if you, if you remember the story of Noah, anybody remember the story of Noah? Remember, Noah's the guy with the flood. Okay, anybody? Yeah, Noah, Noah, Noah. No, yeah, Noah is the flood guy. Okay, what's the big story about that? There was a there was a big boat, right? What was it called? The Ark. Yes, the Ark. Did you know that if you go back and look at um, church uh, architecture, you will notice that there was a there was, there's a period in time that most church building looked like arcs. That if you walk into one, and some even exist now, you look up and they looked like there was an ark. Because the church fundamentally believed that this world, because we compartmentalize things, this world is not good. This world is evil. This body is evil. This space is not good. We're going to go to a better place. So we say, right, we're going to, this is not our home. That is our home. This kind of stinks. That's better. This earth is cursed and blah, 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 blah. But that is where we want to go. So the idea that has seeped into even the Christian faith is, hey, we escape this to get to that. We don't celebrate here. We celebrate there. Here, life just stinks. Or, 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 or it's just hard. This is not it. Eternal life is over there. It's not just, it's not here at all. And I wonder, when you think about that, and when that seeps into our soul and begins to navigate our decisions, what kind of person, what kind of Christian, what kind of church are we? Are we the church that says, hey, 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 let's huddle up. Let's get everybody who's on the same page here because we're escaping. This is the ark, and we're escaping the world. Don't let the world in. And you've heard this, right? Don't let the world in. No, 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 no. Let's keep this safe. Why? Because, again, it's like we're escaping the world. We're escaping this, and we're going there. So life becomes a series of escaping this kind of space and going into this kind of space. Is it, is it really what God wanted us to live? When he says God is life, is it? Is, it, is that really the case? Really the case at, at all? My, my son uh, was asking me uh, earlier this week, he was like, hey, so what's the, this week's message all about? And the way he asked it, honestly, I love him. He, the way he asked it was like, should I even care? <laughs> like that was kind of the idea. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. He's great. Ash was awesome. Okay. But he's, he's straight up. He was like, uh, I mean, is it going to be any, you know, not that it's going to be worth a, something, but it's just like, is it relevant? And I said, and I was like, what is this message about? 
I said, you know what? This message is about how to live a happy, fulfilled life. And he was like, oh, okay. I was like, I think it is. Like, I got, I got to deliver on that. I think, I, I do believe, though, it is. It's, it's, it's living a happy, fulfilled life. Because there is fundamentally a different view of what we think we should live, the kind of life that we should live, and the life God wants us to live. And, 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 and when you say God is life, um, it's, it's extremely different to, I think, what all of us are thinking. So let's jump right into it. Um, if you've got your Bibles, you can grab those. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And then I'm going to explain uh, the rest of the chapter a little bit, read a couple more passages for you, and then I'll read the last thought that he has in that same uh, chapter. So let me jump right in. It's uh, verse 1. It says, Everyone, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. Let's just stop right there um, for a second. Actually, I'll keep on going. And and it says in verse 3, he says, In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. uh, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who, uh, who, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's, okay, let's stop right here. There's so many things to unpack here, but let me explain. Uh, let me go through um, some of them. You First of all, he fundamentally changes this idea of what it means to be uh, in relationship with God. He says this. He says... Um, that everyone who believes in Jesus, that who believe that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. So he's talking about not believing in Jesus. He's talking about believing in Christ, which we go, that's the same thing. That's his last name, Mr. Jesus Christ, <laughs> right? How many of you thought that? I did. As a growing up Muslim, I was like, that's his last name. I'm Christ, Jesus Christ. I mean, like, like, like that's it. Like, that's his last name. But it's not true. And here's why I think we all kind of think that, is we, we, there's so much talk, um, PR, about Jesus and nothing about Christ. And we all, we've said, we've heard the phrase, it's all about Jesus, 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 Jesus. But Jesus is the human name of the expression of God, which is actually divine, which is called the Christ, the anointed one. And so there is something more that John's pointing to. He said, your life is not in Jesus. It's more, it's it's, it's different. Here's what he's trying to say. He's saying that if you don't understand that this Christ, this divine nature of God is the nature that actually brought Jesus into human history, gave him a physical human presence, and now we just call him Jesus because everybody's called Jesus. Other people are called Jesus, uh, but people are not called Christ. If someone is called Christ, or if they call themselves Christ, we got an issue. But it's, it's just Jesus. Everybody's, people are named Jesus. That's all good because it's the human expression of something that's actually divine. That in Christ, it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's Christ, the, 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 the part of God that created all of these things. So that's why you think when you read, if you've read the Bible, you go, okay, am I supposed to believe in Jesus or am I in Jesus? Am I created for Jesus? Am I, what's going on? Here's, let me explain this. So basically what it is, is we have been told which is incomplete. We've been told that we were created, we were created by God to live for him, which makes total sense, right? You're like, of course, I, I believe that. And Naeem, don't tell me that's not true because I bought the t-shirt. Okay, fourteen ninety nine. Like, I mean, I, I got that. I mean, that's, that's my thing. Why? I was created by God to live for him because we're supposed to live for him, not for ourselves, but for Him, I must, uh, what, decrease, he must increase. Come on, Naeem, come on. That's the reality. I get that, I get that. But with John's writings, there's a depth to it. He says you and I have to move from that idea of we were created by him to live for him. What he's saying is that we were actually created in God to live from him. Not 
created by him to live for him, created in him to live from him. It is a totally different conversation. Have you ever been in a relationship, okay, of any kind that you, that you had to just, you had to like please them in different ways, like you just could not, you could not get it right to save your life? Like, have you ever been in a, uh, in a work situation? You're like, oh my gosh, my gosh, is everything okay? Are we okay? Have you ever had to tiptoe around someone? Have you ever had to like, like uh, I hope that doesn't offend her. Oh, I go, I, have you ever thought, I hope she has a good day today? Forget your day, I just hope she has a good day because if she doesn't have a good day, we're all having a bad day, <laughs> you know? See, if you believe that your Christian uh, uh, experience and your life with God is about being in a relationship where you have to continually please the other person, um, you will live your life managing and focusing, focusing only about on yourself, your performance, and your sin, and your righteousness. Why? Because you believe, fundamentally, you were created by Him, so you owe Him, and then you were created, you're supposed to live for Him, and so God is waiting around saying, get your stuff together. And so your walk and my walk in Christianity is all about just trying to perform for God. Why? Because we've been told, we've, been, we've read, hey, you were created by Him to what? Live for him. But no one told us, hey, hey, it's deeper than that. When he talks about, hey, people who have this eternal life, people who are born of God have to, have, have to believe this, realize this, that Jesus is actually the Christ. It is the Christ. It is, he is in here. He is the creator of all things. Paul talked about it in Colossians. He said, when in him, everything was created through him, by him, for him. And what is he talking about? He's talking about this Christ DNA, this, this, this source that everything was created in, and you and I live out of that, believing that. The, the good news is that God sent himself, the Christ himself, took on human flesh and made a way that we could forever have a relationship with him. That's the good news. It's not the good news is you, he made you, and now he's waiting for you to get your act together which is the Christian popular, maybe, idea. No, it's different. It's not that at all. It's more than that. And see, if you read uh, the, the last chapter, he explains it because people are, he, he goes into these, uh, these, these, uh, these thoughts and you're like, you're, you might even think, why are you talking about this stuff? Because he talks about sin, talking about how if people go off and people, uh, if they go off and you have to bring them back. And, and uh, uh, he's talking about this idea of managing sin. And he begins to have this conversation with us and says, hey, and in other verses, I wish I could read them. I mean, read the whole chapter to you. But he says, hey, hey, don't, don't fall into this. Don't fall into this idea that, like, if you sin, you're, 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 you've lost connection and, and God doesn't hear your requests. I mean, he goes on and says, hey, you, you have to understand that you, the connection, the, the, the reality you and I live in, what we believe is that there is no connection to be lost. You're in him. You work out of him. Like, for example, have you ever, have you ever been in a phone call and uh, it was a bad connection? Is it annoying? It's, a, it's annoying, isn't it? It's, an, it's annoying. I re uh, the other day I was in one, and when this happens, I'm the most annoyed. It's when the connection gets funky where you hear yourself say it. Oh, that's the worst, isn't it? I can't even focus. I can't focus. It's, it's funny because I said it. I'm just hearing it again. I'm like, I'm like, you're distracting me. Me, me, you are distracting me. Like, stop it. I can't, I can't do it. And the problem is the other person doesn't hear it. They don't. And you're like, and they're like, you're, are you nuts? What's going on? I'm like, no, I just can't. I can't do this. Why? I can't hear myself talk. You are talking. No, I know, but, but myself is talking to me. I just don't. <laughs> Just I don't, with a weird accent, and I don't want, no, just stop it. I don't want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut this call. I'm gonna shut, and you know, it's, it's harder when there's so many other people in, 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 on the call. So with the staff, we do every week, weekly, 
on Fridays we do this Zoom uh, huddle call about the weekend and we all get on on the call wherever we are. And, uh, and I tell you, the connection sometimes is ridiculous. And I'll just tell you right now, okay? Some of our staff, they're, they're ridiculous. <laughs> because they're doing all kinds of stuff when we're trying to have a meeting. Oh, I hear it on the background. Do you, you, you know what I'm talking about? You hear it. You, you hear it. I'm like, what are you guys doing? What's going on here? Are you dri- who's driving? Who's driving? Someone will say, hey, I'm going through a tunnel. <laughs> what? 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 Pastor Mike. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Are you, th- it's, it's echoing. Where are you? Are you in the bathroom again? Seriously, bro. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, what's going on here? We got people screaming in the background, cats, I don't even know. I'm like, guys, mute yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop it. Stop it. But the hardest thing is just the connection when you can't really hear. I think that when we believe that managing our sin and living for God means just living for Him, and life is all about that, we spend our entire Christian life and then even our other part of our life trying to keep this connection because if we don't keep it, we're going to lose it. And then it's all about just staying connected. It's all about just staying connected. And God is saying, hey, I am life itself. Okay, stop believing the lie that you're going to get disconnected. You, you, you don't even, get, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Why have you believed this? You were created in me. That's why in Jeremiah he says, I had a relationship with you before you were born. What does that even mean? Before I knew you, before I created you. Okay, well, oh, well fine then. What does that even, what does that even mean? It means that the life that we, the existence we know, the, live, the life that we are living right now, there's so much more to this. When God says, I am life, and when people who believe that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, they have this eternal life. And they, they, they understand that there's the, the, the commands, the ideas, the, the worldview I want you to live on has so, is, is, is so much to do with living in God, loving, being loved by Him, live, and loving people like Him. That's why He continually, again and again, says, hey, you cannot know me, you cannot know me, you cannot know me. You can't even know if you love God if you don't love others. Because if you're in love and, and you move out of love, there is no way you can move out of something if you don't or if you're not totally in it. You can do things for the wrong reason. But it's very different to be in something and you're, and you're giving out of what you are. Because you know when you give of what you, out of what you are, it's a different conversation. You know the difference between someone who gives out of who they are and who are just doing this uh, for, a, for recognition. It's a very different conversation. Very different conversation. And so he says, hey, this is the kind of life. He's talking about a worldview. And if you continue to, uh, reading the chapter, he, he'll, he'll, he'll say, he's, he talks about don't, don't, get, don't get confused. Don't let people uh, tell you there's, there's another different worldview. Do not allow this stuff to get inside of you. In fact, he ends this, his thought, verse um, 21 And he says this, let me read this. He says, dear children, keep away. Okay, so dear children, keep away from anything, from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. He's like, keep away from anything. Which again, if you're thinking about, you're thinking idols and this and that. No, no, he's talking about Anything that keeps away from like the, 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 the Christ in your heart, the knowledge that you were made, you were made in him and to live from him. Because friends, if we don't understand that, we will continue to live our lives, continue to live our lives trying to please him. That's it. And that's going to be our existence. And it's going to be about just 
I just, I just live to please him. No, God's not calling you to live a life to please him. Uh, God's calling you to, and me to live a life to proclaim him. That everything we do says that God lives and God, that God exists. You're not supposed to be kind. You're supposed to be God's kindness walking around. You're not supposed to be loving. You're God's love just existing in the world. You're called to be light. He says you're the light. Not that you have light or you have a flashlight. No, no, no. He says you are light. You light up. Your very presence, because Christ is in you, lights up the world. It's a very different kind of life. If you and I live this kind of life that we're, okay, it's, no, 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 I got to live for him. I got to do this. I got to do this. You know what it means? It means you're self-focused. And I believe so many of us have, have just, just, just signed up for that. Let me explain this way, okay? Let's just, let's just say, let's ask the question, okay, how do I be happy? How, how can I live a happy and fulfilled life? Well, if we can list all, so many things, let me give you a few. Let me give you four. And you believe this. I, I believe this. Okay, if I, were to, if I was going to live a happy, fulfilled life, here's what I need to work. First of all, I need to be free. The level of my freedom is connected to my happiness. If I'm emotionally free, physically free, that's always a good thing. Um, uh, psychologically free, if I'm just free, if I'm just free from all the things you can think of, the level of my freedom is connected to the level of my life. To which we would say, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Then we would think, okay, not just freedom. I don't, I, being free, being fully free is being fully happy and satisfied. Okay, that's one idea. Then it's like, oh, no, no, also um, being successful. Being successful. If you're successful in everything you do, then you will live a happy, fulfilled life. We're like, that's true, right? I guess if you're successful in your relationships, in your career, in all your ventures, if you try something and you're really great at it, if you're successful, hey, guess what? It makes you happy. If you have a win, it makes you happy. So you go, the more successful I am, the more wins I get, the more happy I am, the more fulfilled I am. Why not? We believe that. How about this one? We all believe this. Um, the level of the, to which I am loved is connected to my quality of life. Why wouldn't you believe that, right? You're like, you're, it's so true. If you let people love you, if you let love in, the people who love you determine the quality of your life. If you are loved by uh, friends and family, if, you are, if you've been loved and you, you, you are loved now, you're loved by someone special and you're just loved, of course, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have a fulfilling life? Why wouldn't you have a full life? Of course, if your kids love you. I mean, yes. So we believe that. How about this one? Comfort. Man, if I'm just comfort, comfortable, that means if I just live a pain-free life, I'm going to live a happy life. If you've ever dealt with chronic pain, you're like, amen to that. Yes, if, I just, if you could just get away from chronic pain, uh, chronic discomfort, anxiety, stress, if I can just get comfortable, if I can just have some kind of luxury in a sense, man, I would be great. All of those things that are listed, all those four things, make total sense. To which we would go, that is, if we can figure those out, that's life. But God says, hey, uh, to live a full and satisfying life, to live a life that's connected to me, in which, you know, if you read uh, John uh, um, 15, he, he explains this whole idea. Jesus says, hey, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Yeah, apart from me, you can't really do anything. He's talking about tapping into this everlasting life, this different kind of existence, this different kind of uh, life. And so, so what I would say is that those four things make sense to us, but they're not the answer to living a fulfilled life. So Jesus would do this, I think. He would say this. Now, I mean, obviously, I, I put words to it, but... More than uh, determining um, your freedom as a sign of your fulfillment, he would say this. He said, "The level, uh, the it's not enough for you to be free. It's how many people you set free." He would call. He would say, "You you need to be a freedom fighter. 
It's not about, it's not about your freedom. Yeah, that's great. It's not about justice for you. It's about justice for everybody else around you. You're living free, but no one else is free. He says, you want to live a fulfilled life, a full life? You need to be a freedom fighter for other people. It is not enough that you live free and everybody else around you are living in all kinds of bondage. That is no kind of life. He says, that's the kind of life in God. If you, if you live for him, then it's all about you and your stuff. But if you live in him and work out of him and through him, then it's all about the freedom that other people get to experience because you exist. And then he would say, hey, uh, success, it's not about being great at this thing or that thing. It's, in fact, it's about finding greatness in others. It's this idea of being a headhunter. It's about this idea of like, Pulling out people's potential is looking into people's lives and saying, calling them to be great. I know this. I know this, guys. It, I, I know, and you know this too. It does not matter how successful you are and how popular you get and how whatever ladder you climb and you're on the top. It doesn't matter because if the people around you are not great, if their potential has not been realized, if they are not all that they could be, you and I have failed as leaders. Because a great leader calls out other people's greatness out of them. And that's the message of Jesus. That's the life in God he's talking about. When he talks about um, being loved, right? He says, I, I, that's great. He says, that's great. But if you want to live a full life, if you want to life, live a life in me, here's, here's the thing. It's not about how much you are loved. It's about how great you love. It's about, it's about being a great lover of people. It is moving past your hurt, your pain, your, your trigger points, whatever you got to do, and go into a place and a space that you decide, hey, hey you know what I'm going to do? It, I'm going to love people more than I have ever been loved. I'm not going to love them the way I've been loved. No, I'm going to love them more than I have ever been loved. I'm going to do that. That's tapping into this life of God. That's tapping into a, a, a view of God that's more than this, hey, this is ordinary life. This is, this, is, this is what John is talking about when he says, hey, hey, I don't want you to put anything else in the place of, of uh, don't, put, don't replace God um, and don't allow anything else in your heart. Don't allow that to be the for source. Uh, put God's view, God's idea of what life is, and then you'll live a fulfilled life. So when he talks about this idea of comfort, guess what he's saying, right? He's saying, no, 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 it's not about you being comfortable. It's about you being a force, uh, you being dangerous. It's about you moving towards pain and suffering. It's not about being comfortable. Um, recently, I'm reading a book. I mean, I'm in, I'm, I am reading a book uh, right now called um, um, What Doesn't Kill Us. Okay, not a Christian book, by the way, um, or whatever that means. But uh, uh, it's by Scott Carney. And uh, this is the only book that says, do not try all of this at home. <laughs> like, I thought it was only in videos, you right? No, this is in a book. It's like, do not try any of this because it's a research book, and the uh, premise of the book is understanding what the human body can win, uh, endure, the extreme conditions the human body can endure. And his case is this, that as a society, we are training ourselves to become weak physically. And uh, because of all the comforts that we've created. I mean, and who doesn't like comforts, right? Seat warmers, come on, thank you, Jesus, right? <laughs> and then the new stuff, the vented seats, anybody experienced that? They'll cool your butt, too. I mean, wow. That is, wow. Amazing, amazing stuff. I love being comfortable. Who does not? But the life in God is, is not about comfort. Uh, it's about moving towards um, pain and suffering, which is counter, isn't it, to a traditional view? Because of a traditional view, like I started, hey, no, no, world is bad. We are good. Let's build an ark. We're leaving because we're going to escape this darkness because there in heaven, it's going to be awesome. We're going to celebrate. Oh, it's wonderful. So now let's keep darkness away. Let's move, which is counter to everything Jesus says, by the way. He's like, you're light. Okay, that means go into darkness. Like, you go into dark places. You don't 
run away from them. You move towards pain and suffering. Not away from it. Your, your love, you move towards, towards places that are, that are filled with hate and you love. Like you move into fearful places and cast out fear. You be the one. You be the one to do that. It's, it's the different kind of life. Have you ever been uh, in a moment where you watch the movie and then uh, it's always like horror movies or suspenseful movies and there's always a scene where there's a, it's, a, it's a dark cave or it's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the door that, open, that opens up and it's, there's a basement, right? And one person always goes, hey, I'm going to look and see if Susan's down there, <laughs> right? And what do we say? Don't go Susan's been dead. She's been dead. She's, she got eaten up. But I don't even know who. Okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. In some movies, they have this, uh, like, they'll have, um, I don't know, they're, they're going through some caves or something, and then there's, a, there's an opening, and it's just enough to put a hand through. And they put a hand through. Why do you do that? You get, and your hand is gone. Or they'll do this. This is the worst for me. I don't know why. They'll put the, their eye in there. I'm like, bro, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, I've seen all the alien movies. How many of you have seen alien movies? I don't know why I watch them. I know what's going to happen. Someone's going to be like, oh, what is that? Like, (laughs) it always happens. Now, I just wonder, is it because they like like that we do this and they they like the response and actors and uh, directors are smart? Or is there a sense in us, wired up internally, that... Yet we fear darkness. There's something about us that says we need to go and rescue. We need to go something. Like, is there, is there, is there something about us that this says, um, even though I'm afraid of this opportunity, I'm afraid of this darkness and pain and grief, I'm afraid of what this might do. There's something, and for some of us, it's a lot bigger than others, but there's something inside of us that says, I can do this. Something inside of you that says, I can rescue this. I'm supposed to do this. I can handle this. Could it be that there's something inside of you you were created with a um, subconscious that you don't even realize that tells you, you are light. You have the power of God in you. And you can go. And you might not have the words to say. You might not have the right attitude. You might not even have the right spirit. But I will tell you, you were created with this life force, which is the Christ. That's why we believe in the Son of God, because it's the Christ that lives inside of us. You were meant to do this. So that's why we don't live our lives trying to be free and trying to be loved and trying to be successful and trying to be comfortable. We live our lives freeing others, loving others, making other people great, and what? Guess what? Moving to pain and suffering. That is what we need more than any other time in this world. With New Zealand, the things that have happened there, I mean, I put a posted a video on Instagram, and I just, I really didn't want to post it. I just felt compelled to. People were asking me, hey, what do you think? What do you think? And if you don't know, I mean, it's two mosques were, uh, um, were attacked, 49 people died, 40 plus people injured. Um, and, you know, the, one of the mosques was, was called Al Nur, which is light. Nur actually is the word for light. And my daughter's name, if you don't know, is Nura, which is again light. Um, and it just kind of messed with me a little bit. I'm like, oh, what, what do I do? And you know what I wanted to do? I didn't want to hear it. When I first heard about it, I'm like, I don't want to read it. I don't. It's another thing. It's another thing I can't do. It's a, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to do this. And a part of me was like, I just don't. Just shut the TV off. Like, just, can I just. But then there's another part of me that says, that I got to move towards this. We've got to say something about this. We have to move towards this. We have to stand and sit, we stand against evil and sit with the people who are hurting. We have to do this. And friends, I'll end with this. Our fulfilling life that God is calling us to is calling us to a life in Him that, that is truly rooted in Him and we live out of Him. We're never, we're never called to, to live a life that just pleases him. No, it's a life that proclaims who he is. 
And man, if, it, if, people, if people begin to do that and agree on that and come together, that would be the church. That would be the church. So that's my prayer for us. Um, I want to pray for you. Can we stand? Let's do that. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you um, for these conversations. I thank you for the lives that we are, we are living and the lives that we could live. And Father, I just pray that you would erase all the, all the categories in our lives that say this is godly life and this is not. This is what I do for God and this is what I do for myself and this is what I do for my boss and this is what I do for my spouse and this is what I do for my kids. God, it's all you. It's all you. It's all you. It's always been you. So, Father, I pray that we would learn to live in you and from you. And then when Jesus said, hey, apart from me, you cannot do anything, we would understand that, that you are the source of everything that is full, everything that we know of that is life. So, God, I pray, would you courageously call us and would you courageously equip us to be f people who set people free, people who love people more than we've been loved, people who bring out people's greatness, and people who move towards suffering and pain, move towards the shadows with our light. God, we love you. We thank you in your son's name. Amen.